PCE is Southern Africa's leading supplier of kitchen utensils, uh, industrial cookware, um, commercial kitchen appliances, and this is obviously supplied to the hospitality and food service industries. Um, we've look, the company was founded back in 1987 and established um, a reputation for exceptional service and like basically superior quality products. Uh, also built their reputation or our reputation on being South Africa's leading supplier of kitchen utensils, as well as the entire range that we just mentioned. And uh, we've got a broad, um, a, a broad uh, expansion of being able to touch the, our sub-Saharan um, neighboring countries. We boast and carry a range of more than 6,000 products, all of which are best of breed and sourced from reputable local and international suppliers. Catalog is basically seen as the go-to for our particular industry. And in addition to this, we are able to provide live demonstrations. So currently, obviously, the global challenge um, ranges from component shortages within the supply chain, um, container shortages, um, obviously having certain factories or certain key supplies being backlogged for the rest of the year with um, their production levels and um, getting that year on time. Um, it's currently our peak season, um, and unfortunately, we do have a couple of massive um, supply supply chain issues, mainly from a component section or from a component side, where the orders are all in the pipeline. They were placed well in advance. Um, unfortunately, our suppliers are unable to fulfill these orders due to their component shortages. So uh, that is across the range. So from anything from our tableware, which is a glassware range, um, through to our, our complete or finished goods. Um, and we, we, we see that across the board. So it's, um, it's a just vast and it's across the board where we're facing these kind of issues. Um, I would say that would definitely be a massive, massive reason for the, the supply chain challenges and delays. Coupled with that, obviously, we have, if there's not cyber attacks, there's, <laughs> there's delays at the ports. So if there's not delays at the ports, um, there's container shortages. So um, at the moment, it's, like, it's, it's the perfect storm for, for, for supply chain not to work in your favor. Um, and that's, that's currently the most frustrating part of our, our day to day, I would say, um, where we are unable to get commitment from our suppliers on a confirmed and accurate ETA. BCE has basically implemented the system back in 2018. And before that, it was quite archaic in today's terms, I would say, and where we did our purchasing on a month-to-month -month basis uh, with the implementation of, implementation of, of DDMRP and V2Y specifically, uh, we were able to obviously equip um, our buyers plans um, with the the tool, the necessary tool, in order to to assist us in forecasting, planning, and making sure we have the right stock arrive at the right time. Obviously, there's a inventory management involved there as well, and um, the methodology. I must say, so uh, this has basically assisted us in in in, in um, basically ordering on time, making sure the quantities are are accurate and based on so if there are certain sales spikes or whatever the case is they're able to identify this using the methodology or using the the, the, the b2y's tool so um provided that all your information your, your data is is accurate or as accurate as as can be or i would say that it's pc has basically left light years ahead of where they where we were um, prior to 2018. It's no trade secret uh, that the hospitality industry has been significantly hit. Um, we know that, you know, there's a restriction in terms of people going to restaurants. The main source of revenue for businesses being liquor in your restaurant and, uh, industry was there was many times that there was no alcohol trade at all. Um, so this, this really affected the demand for in one uh, our products but as the levels unlocked we saw a dramatic increase uh, back into business um, where it showed that the south african consumer wanted to go for experience they didn't just want you know physical uh, items such as your electronics they were over that they you know that was the initial hope 
beginning of lockdown, everyone was at home, buying everything online. After some time, you get a, quite bored with that, and they they were yearning to go again, experience, you know, socialize at restaurants. So as the lockdown started to decrease, business picked up. We knew that our ADU would be completely different now. We could no longer just look at uh, 2019, uh, you know, as a benchmark to predict the future. Uh, we had to look at our A items in the business that would have the largest impact on revenue and forecast, forecast that per line item. So uh, we did need to look at the current trend uh, that's happening in the business. And that would be could be seasonality, it could be spikes as the hotel, as liquor unlocked, we would see a spike, we'd use that slightly, then adjust it again as the lockdown went down. Some of the master settings we also had to look at was the lead time factor, because now we've seen a big variability in our lead time. So we needed to increase our buffer levels and we wanted to be specific. And we had to look at we know which lines are going to be impacted by this lockdown. So in terms of the hospitality, we know that hotels weren't going to open up anytime soon. We know that we could decrease the buffer for those items. So we didn't carry on ordering and keeping extensive amounts of buffer. We know that we also, from a variability factor, uh, specifically for the lines that, let's say, glasses, where alcohol had unlocked, there's a huge variability. As it unlocked, we saw a massive increase in glass, uh, glass sales we would have to increase that. So we did that ahead of time as we predicted what would happen. Have we been successful in certain areas? Yes, but as the Boer effect increases and the more variability we get in, you know, we only as good as our suppliers, unfortunately. So what we also tried to do was integrate with our um, key suppliers um, in their systems and provide them insight into our color chart um, so they could see what was important from a priority. So it was actually relatively easy within B2Is um, and the, using the DDMRP method, we actually have a test environment. So what we're able to do is test out various scenarios, plug that in, see what it looks like, and model it, and it is it giving us the result that we're looking for. And if we were happy with it, within a day, it, we already could implement huge changes within the business. Was it difficult or painful? Um, I do have a sense that it was difficult and painful in the sense that it didn't go always according to plan, unfortunately. And uh, we don't have a crystal ball, but it was quick to implement. And I think that was one of the key things, you know, I, I joined BCE seven months ago, but from the first month we could already make changes. Visually, you could see everything, all the planners, we already reallocated all our suppliers. So. Was, there was a focus, people knew what they needed to do. It was easy to prioritize. We were just very impressed with how quickly the team had adapted to an entirely new system, which immediately is an indication of um, simplicity as it, at its finest. Yet it, with the system being so complex, it was, it was one of those things where you're like, wow, you know, um, obviously, just within the first week, first two weeks, if I'm not mistaken, now they they got the hang of it. They understood the color coding sequence from the get go. Um, obviously, understanding your buffer settings, making sure that you have the correct buffer settings and how important those buffer settings are. Um, they obviously got the grasp with within within a couple of days, I would say. Um, obviously, it's going to take time. But it's a new system, so perfecting operating on it or being engaging with the system obviously does take a bit of time. However, I must say that they adapted very quickly. Um, also, it's something that they use in order to extract information and share with our suppliers. So that is key. Um, also, knowing that everybody, no, let's say everybody, I mean us as a procurement team, as well as the even part of the logistic team and then our suppliers understanding how to read and interpret those kind of extracts and those reports is critical. That's one of those things that make it just a little, a little bit more easier in terms of um, just reading it, not having to send different reports out to different departments or different, um, different suppliers. So long story short, I think they adapted very quickly. Um, to this day, it's something that you continuously learn um, and perfect, but overall, 
I think it's great. I think they've adapted the best that they possibly could. Yeah. Some of the key successes were um, reduction of the total business overstock lines by 14 percent. Um, next key success, I would say, reduction of our Cape Town branch over stock lines by 25%. And then um, reduction on overstock spares, which was a big one, by 14% um, while maintaining current service levels. Um, also reduction in, to in total um, business back orders by 56%. So we also managed during that time, obviously, to improve um, this kind of communication to the business as well. But I would say that the aforementioned successes were definitely the key in terms of just measuring our key successes. So those 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 four points I would say were were key. Those are definitely the big takeaways for us. I've been working with B2Ys for quite some time, and the experience has been nothing short of phenomenal. Um, as far as support is concerned, you will call away, you will text away. Uh, we often we always get almost instantaneous uh, responses to whatever queries we may have. So, uh, and I'm not just saying this to obviously put, in, put a naughty badge on your on your shirt collar, but it's it's been it's been a, a pleasant experience, I would say, and it's been educational. Um, so from my personal side, um, definitely say it's been something that we, the relationship developed has been something that you can definitely take away as educational, knowledgeable, and overall probably a, the most, one of the most pleasant experiences with regards to engaging with the service provider that I've encountered. So that's what, that's it from me. From an honest opinion. So, I mean, I've worked with many inventory tools over the time, and I do find that B2Is has a lot of tools within itself. And when I say that there's, you know, there's a dashboard, there's a detailed area where it goes per skew, um, it also is visual, uh, so when even uh, something simple as if I extract into Excel, there's color within the cell. Uh, people, it's not easy, you know. I don't have to go and make colors or anything like that. I can extract information. I can upload information, um, which these were already predefined tools that were in it. What's next is actually we're going to be working with. The B2I's team, as well as the development team, on a lot of tools on highlighting areas of focus, which it already has, but we just want a little bit more strategic focus that is custom to our business. Um, a lot to do with um, classification um, within the tools, as well as forecasting and um, a concentration on an overall dashboard from a managerial point of view as well. I think what COVID has done and the pandemic has done is show the ever increasing importance of priority, you know, and I think someone that needs to get, you know, action quicker, respond quicker, B2Is as well as the DDMRP methodology that it's based on, it would be critical for any business. And we've seen it right now where our teams are having to be so agile respond immediately. Customers, uh, they don't care anymore regarding the pandemic and extended lead times and that. We need to things make things happen. And knowing when we're going to run out of stock, is it a risk? By not having to do complex calculations in the background in a spreadsheet, which I sent to someone else, but seeing it on a dashboard, um, going into the data per planner, uh, these things just make you know planning a lot more easier. So uh, I guess I think for anyone that's struggling with planning and prioritizing, uh, they definitely need to think about using uh, the DDMRP methodology. Training. Training. I think uh, if you don't have the process, you can have any software, but if you don't understand the, the inputs that go into the system, you do not have a clue what's going on then. So it's critical that you understand the inputs that are going into the system that you're driving. And we've seen that with, you know, your ADU. What is your ADU? What are your lead time settings? What are your, your variability settings? You, you need to understand what you're doing there. 